Welcome back. Well, my next guest has been Deputy Leader of the Labour Party and in the Cabinet for a year. Here to talk about his rise to senior level politics, the Irish water shambles and death threats. Please welcome Minister Alan Kelly. Right, well, we'll get to politics and water charges in a few moments. First though, I don't know much about your background. Tell me about your background, your parents, where you grew up. Yeah, well, I grew up in the little village of Porto, um, probably the best little village in Ireland. Um, probably more famous for having Liam Sheedy, the man who stopped the cats winning five in a row, and Darren Gleeson, who's playing in the Munster final tomorrow, which is critically important for me that they win. Um, great village, beside Loch Derg, beside the Shannon, beautiful place to live, a great community. A uh, fabulous community. Um, lived there with my mother and father and my brother Declan. Parents worked very hard all their life. Um, didn't have it easy. We had a small uh, dairy farm and then uh, that wasn't sustainable so my father worked for the council and my mother to whatever job she could in order to give my brother and I an education and um, you know we took it so that was our background. And they were steeped in the Labour Party, weren't they? Well, they were very much involved in the Labour Party, both my parents and what goes back to my grandparents. Um, we very much were huge supporters of the likes of John Ryan, who was a TD at the time, and a hero of ours, I suppose, for many different personal reasons. And obviously in Tipperary, we had Michael Ferris and Sean Tracy. There was a huge tradition of the Labour Party mm. uh, in Tipperary. So, yeah, we were steeped in that. But there was no one in my family who was actually active in politics before myself. And you're married to Regina. Your parents are here tonight and so is your wife, Regina. And tell me about Regina and where you met her. You're very good researchers. Um, the best. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we met in UCC. We were introduced by a very good friend of mine. And um, we met actually outside. I lived in number 10 in College Road and she lived in number 9. And I met her there between both houses. And uh, obviously I got to know her. And um, she's from Waterville in County Kerry. Um, a big football fan, I'm a big hurling fan, and we hit it off. But interestingly enough, the same people own both houses. And because they own both houses, they were doing up the house and they put up scaffolding. So all I'll say is uh, I didn't always use the front door in order to access the house. <laughs> scaffolding. But look, as we said earlier, your parents steeped in labour, you're steeped in labour. Does it therefore make it all the more shameful, I suppose, to use the word, that you are the minister who presides over water charges, possibly the most unpopular measure any government has ever introduced. I wouldn't use the word shameful. In fact, I wouldn't do anything if I didn't think it was right. I'm a person who's driven by conviction, uh, very strong-willed, very direct in what I say. What I say is what I mean. What I mean is what I do. And uh, I believe we had to go down the road we have to go uh, for the future of my children, uh, Ava and Senan and for everyone else's children because, quite simply, Miriam, we're in Donnybrook here tonight. Donnybrook is served uh, by the Vartry pipe. Uh, it runs into a reservoir and comes here. And in 10 years' time, you're likely not to be able to pour that glass of water uh, at certain hours of the and day And I here. hear that, to be honest, and I've actually heard you say that before, but it didn't have to be the omni-shambles from start to finish that the introduction of water charges has been. Well, yes, there was lots of mistakes made. Um, I'm often told that I, I got probably one of the largest hospital passes in political history, um, and I agree, by the way. Um, but we did change it. We did change everything around in relation to it. You know, lots of mistakes were made in relation to Irish water, but setting up Irish water wasn't a mistake. Because historically... But the way it was set up was oh, a mistake. Well, like, I mean, I, we, can stand, we can sit here all I've accepted, saying... I've accepted that. Yeah. But uh, setting it up wasn't a mistake. I mean, down through history, you know, water infrastructure wasn't invested in, in the level it needed to be. Because it was up competing with education, with healthcare, with social welfare. And it wasn't, being honest, it wasn't sexy enough to get the large scale of funding but that no was required. But no one doubts that. But was it, to be honest, the timing? And also, you're the Labour Party. The Labour Party is meant to be looking after people who need to be looked after a lot. So this was almost a step too far, a bill too much for people who had the USE, who had childcare costs, who were going to property tax. I mean, it was just a step too far. I accept it was very difficult, and I've always accepted that. Uh, but there's never the wrong time to do the right thing. And I'm absolutely convinced for the future of this country. I meet some of the largest corporations in Ireland. They don't want to know if we're going to have clean water in five years. They want to know if we're going to have it in 30 or 40 years. The whole scale of this, the whole uh, capacity of this, and the length of time it was going to take was completely underestimated. 
Uh, this is a pro massive project. Uh, I'm not doing this to be popular, obviously. I'm doing, it to, I'm doing it because it's the right thing. I'm doing it to create an infrastructure for the future of this country. And we will ensure we have jobs and investment here. We will ensure from a social point of view we'll have water. We'll I'm a former manager in Board Falcia. We will ensure our tourism and I industry hear that, is protected. But I think, you know, even because this is in prime time, it's, but if you just even look at the human level of people, I met many of those protesters, tens of thousands of them. They weren't your usual tiny group of people who go out and protest and don't want to pay their bills. They were genuine people who went out because they felt so angry about this. And you're going to need them to vote for you next oh, year. Well, uh, you know, I suppose you have to accept that people were very angry. And I, I do accept that. Mm. But I believe it's changed quite substantially. Um, I believe a lot more people have you know, come around to the view uh, that this had to be done. And they're coming around to the view for many other reasons. You said you know, about uh, the Labour Party and having to bring this in. It was also the Labour Party who's contributed to bring in unemployment down to 9.7%, has ensured that our economy is the fastest growing economy in Europe. Has this is a party political it's broadcast. Not, it's not a party political broadcast. But the point being is this, is because we have over 100,000 put more people back to work, and because people's lives are turning, because we're going to have a budget in a few months' time, which is going to give money back to people, you know, the fact that we had this charge is probably more palatable uh, because they can see now the sacrifices that have been made. How many actually people have the paid their bills so far? I don't know. I've been honest with you. I have don't you know. asked? Um, Irish Water will, will actually, I think they're going to announce it this week, um, in the coming days. Did not tell you before they announce it? No, I haven't. I'll be honest with you, they had to have a board meeting first. That's where the protocol is. And, have and you then, had a hint or a clue how it's going? Well, I, I, would, I would suspect that, you know, we might be surprised by the volume of people who've paid their bills. On a different note, but it, the same story, and this is a horrible side of the story from your point of view, there have been death threats against your family, haven't there? Well, there's been death threats against myself. Um, there's a lot of horrible stuff that's gone on, Miriam, and it's, it's, you know, it's difficult to talk to about it sometimes because you know, it's one thing to have uh, some threats against yourself or you know, nasty stuff about yourself. It's another thing for stuff to be sent to your, your family, your wife, your, your parents, um, and also my staff. Uh, my staff are workers. You know, I represent workers. I'm the, I come from the Labour Party. I'm the deputy leader of the Labour Party. We represent people who work. These people just work for me. And there's people ringing them up telling them they're going to be killed. Are they serious threats? And, and would you have involved the Gardaí? Well, of course involved the mm. Gardaí. But, uh, I mean, how do you distinguish between something, whether it's serious or not? You don't know the mm. minds of these people. You know, it's happened in other countries where politicians or people who work for politicians have been killed or injured. And it's completely unacceptable. It's completely unacceptable in any way, shape or form that people should treat workers or family members of politicians. And dare I say it, politicians. Mm. At the end of the day, I have to go home to my two children who are five and three years of age. I love them to bits. At the end of the day, this is a job for me. I do it because I believe I'm hopefully good at it. I do it because I'm a person who has conviction about what I stand for and what I believe in. Um, but, you know, some people do cross the line. What about your parents? They even, I mean, your parents are older. Have they been affected by this in terms of threats? My parents are here tonight uh, and delighted to see them here. Um, yeah, they have been affected. It hasn't been, hasn't been good for them. Obviously, do you worry about them and your wife? Because you work here in Dublin and you're there. And, you know, it's worth saying it's probably a, a tiny, tiny group it is, of it is extremists. A, it is a tiny it? Group, group. But a few weeks ago, the local superintendent had to come up to me uh, and had to find me and tell me to my face that I was under threat from dissident Republicans. And it's not good to have to go home and talk to your family about that. And did you find that very difficult? Yeah, I found it very difficult. It's, it's just, look, it's one, thing, uh, it's one thing to be out in the public eye. It's one thing for somebody to be doing what I'm doing. Um, I expect to be challenged by yourself in prime time and everywhere else. I expect uh, people to give out substantially, uh, people to check me, hold me to account in the doll, hold me to account on the street and everywhere. But there is a small group of people in this country who just want anarchy. And to be honest with you, the threats and everything. It's not just me, by the way. I don't want to take it, make it just an Alan Kelly thing. There's, there's other things, uh, other people as well. Um, you know, I don't really think that their interest is really about water charges. I think it's a broader issue here in society. So is it worth it? I mean, you're very much on the record as saying you'd like to be Labour leader. Is it worth it, actually? I mean, is it worth going through all of this? It is, it is worth it because I create positive change, I hope. I believe every day uh, I 
um, work out of uh, the Customs House, or work out of Leinster House, or work out of Tipperary. Um, so it is worth it. You get to make positive change. I'm making positive change in relation to, for instance, you know, we've got four billion now to address a big housing issue. And I'll be honest with you, I think the housing issue is probably my biggest priority here, uh, as opposed to water or anything else. Um, so you get to make, when you get to make positive change, when you get to uh, deal with people's real issues, of course it's worth it. And you know, th that's why I entered politics. I entered politics, I'm 39 years of age, just about still there. Final very quick question. Why would you want to be leader of the Labour Party when it could be down as low as 6 or 7% from 19% to the next Well, year? I'm Director of Elections for the Labour Party, Miriam, and we have done a lot of constituency polls, and in every single one of them we're winning the seat. So I believe the next, you know, next seven to eight months are going to be critical for people in this country critical to make a decision between stability and chaos. Okay. If they want stability, I think they should re-elect the government. If they want chaos, they should look to okay. Greece. And that's, but we of take course, this up of, of course, but, 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 of, but of course, of course, I agree with you. It's not that type of debate, but um, of course, yeah, I, I believe that the Labour Party is going to make a huge contribution into the future. Okay, well, look, I appreciate you coming here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Alan Kelly.